Shruti, over to you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our special World Heart Day webinar series. I am Shruti Bharatwaj, a proud volunteer at Project Step One. I welcome all the doctors, teachers, and administrators on this panel. Project Step One, being a volunteering organization, let me start the session with the quote: "Volunteering is at very core of a, being a human. No one has made it through life without someone's help." So well said that no human can survive without a fellow human's help. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has made humanity face an unprecedented crisis, but our doctors and medical team have proved to be the heroes over the past 180 days. Our project step on doctors have made great impact on 5 million lives, have done more than 750k consultations and have been successful in preventing more than 5 million contacts dear doctors step one and citizens need just 30 minutes of your everyday life your 30 minutes every day can save thousands of lives give a miss call on 08047192219 to join the largest doctor volunteer group about today's uh, special webinar session cardiovascular diseases are the number one cause of death worldwide and is projected to remain so according to WHO about 17.5 million died from cardiovascular diseases in 2005 representing 30% of global deaths risk factors that may lead to heart disease and stroke include raised blood pressure cholesterol and glucose levels smoking inadequate intake of fruit and vegetables obesity world heart day was created to inform people around the globe that heart disease is and stroke are the world's leading cause of death today on stefan panel we have a wonderful team from heart rescue india in association with pedistas india i welcome you all doctors heart rescue india's mission is to improve the health of populations and individuals around the world to reduce health disparities by collaboratively conducting transdisciplinary research training and the next generation of global health leaders and building the capacities of global and local partners the purpose is to make the uic com a national leader in global health by expanding global health research for the developing medical and graduate global health education building a network of global and local partners and promoting the visibility and sustainability of global medicine without taking much time i welcome all the panelists teachers and administrator for today's se today's webinar session and moderator for today's session is dr arunasi ramesh she is a professor at hod uh, emergency medicine ramaya medical college and hospitals she is a state advisory committee disaster management member government of karnataka heart rescue india program director bangalore honorary distinguished faculty member uic chicago usa she is also the honorary officer commanding casualty services civil defense bangalore i welcome you all and over to you dr aruna dr aruna you are on mute can you unmute yourself thank you thank you shruti yes uh, we have to thank step 1 and pedi stars for giving this opportunity to work together and getting our act together in on world heart day indeed heart rescue india has started off with a mission to save lives for patients who are having a heart attack recognizing a person is having a heart attack calling the toll free number or 108 and ensuring they reach the hospital in time is a mission that we have undertaken so we have with us the panelist of today and i'm going to call each one of you on the panel distinguished panel from the international and national front so i request each one of you to introduce yourself geetanjali to start off with especially because she is heading the pedistar group of uh, uh, pedistar group in this mission geetanjali over to you please thank you thank you aruna 
On behalf of the distance, I welcome you all on this special day. Uh, this is the third episode we are doing uh, with the theme, Helping the Children to Help Nation uh, during the COVID lockdown time. And a uh, bit about pedestals, uh, could I share my screen, please? Pediatric Simulation Training and Research Society India Pedestals. Uh, it's a voluntary organization founded by Rakshai and uh, myself and another colleague Sujatha. Uh, over the seven years, we have hundreds of doctors and nurses across the country who have joined us in this simulation training. Simulation training is nothing but doing uh, learning by doing instead of learning through the textbooks. Uh, so you can see um, our volunteer doctors and nurses have trained hundreds and thousands of doctors and nurses across the country. Apart from that, what we have realized is our assets are our citizens. So we have traveled outside the hospital. Sorry. Uh, to train the citizens, the public, the police, auto rickshaw drivers, and the bus drivers in another uh, area which is has high mortality in India, that is uh, accident, road accidents. Uh, so our volunteers, uh, we are simulation training them, and it's called Active Bleeding Control Program. They have trained uh, thousands of volunteers of a team, and uh, many lives have been saved. Apart from that, uh, we have started a program for the children to combat the COVID. Um, first one was uh, to listen to their fears and help them manage uh, the COVID and also to leave it, uh, lead a productive life. And the second one we did recently, this is the third special episode that is uh, for the World Heart Day. So welcome you all again on the behalf of Pedistars Project Step 1 and Heart Rescue India. Over to you, Aruna. Thank you. Thank you, Gitanjali. Wonderful. Yes. So together, we are going to rock the world with our efforts to save people from having heart attacks, and especially in this COVID situation. In order to save time, we would request each of the faculty on the panel to actually introduce yourself and tell briefly on the work that is being done at your centers. Can we start off with Dr. Nareshetti, please? We go into the introduction of the faculty. Sir, unmute. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I'm Dr. Shetty here, and I am in charge of the Ramaya Memorial Hospital, and also in charge of the international program. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, uh, but I help a lot of people doing their work, and I'm basically a supporter of any mission that's going to help the country. Thank you. Yes, please. So, Dr. Prabhakar. Hi, uh, good evening. This is uh, Dr. Prabhakar. I'm from University of Illinois College of Medicine in Chicago. I'm an Associate Dean for Technological Innovation and Training. I'm also Senior Associate Dean for Research. Um, and uh, my regular job is I'm a professor uh, in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. And I work on COVID-19 related uh, uh, research, uh, particularly as it relates to drug and vaccine development. Dr. Terry. Aruna, thank you. I'm uh, Terry Vandenhoek. I'm an emergency medicine physician at University of Illinois, uh, Chicago. Um, I'm also project leader for um, uh, Heart Rescue Illinois, a state of about 12 million people in the United States. And we have worked very hard with uh, school children to uh, teach CPR in the communities. We more than tripled uh, bystander CPR rates for cardiac arrest and more than doubled survival in our state. Uh, now we are working with them to um, uh, increase access to care for uh, diabetes, uh, hypertension, and they're also helping us to follow up on our COVID positive patients uh, through phone calls. It's nice to meet everybody today. Dr. Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Edison. Um, I'm from the Department of 
Medical Education, the Department of Emergency Medicine, and the UIC Center for Global Health. I'm a PhD doctor, not a medical doctor. My specialty is education and evaluation, and I've been working very closely with Dr. Hari Prasad for the school programs here in Bangalore. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Dr. Pedro. Well, it's, uh, my name is Pedro Barros. I'm a cardiologist from Brazil. I'm one of the coordinators of the Heart Rescue here in Brazil. I work with chest pain units and telemedicine, and it's a great pleasure to interact with you today. Thank you, Dr. Pedro. Dr. Hari Prasad. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Emergency Medicine. I work with uh, Dr. Aruna. But today, I think uh, my role here is someone uh, who's been uh, taking care of the, the school program of the Heart Rescue India, along with Dr. Aruna, and we work closely with uh, Marsha and the rest of the team at UIC. Uh, so, thank you. Dr. Zizek. Hi, Aruna. Good evening. Uh, good morning. I'm Zhang, uh, Professor and Chair of Department of Global Health at the Peking University in Beijing. Uh, I'm uh, uh, the uh, Heart Rescue China Program Director has been uh, working with uh, uh, Aluna and uh, Dr. Shady over the last, and also, of course, uh, UIC team over the last five years. And uh, we are very excited to, 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 uh, to see the progress and everything that we have accomplished. And really uh, very excited to see this, uh, this uh, event. And uh, in China, we have uh, done similar uh, program uh, to educate the uh, public. And uh, in addition to the World Heart Days, we also have a uh, specific design for emergency uh, uh, call when well, China is, is the one two zero. So we have uh, two events in January called uh, the day one two zero and also uh, in uh, uh, November one one two zero. That's uh, November 20th, also our education day to make sure that uh, uh, talking about two, one, two, zero. First, uh, I was talking about uh, from, the sign, uh, from the onset of uh, sign, uh, get to the hospital and have uh, uh, a blood vessel reopened within 120 minutes, and also make sure to call one, two, zero. So really look, 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 uh, look forward to, 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 to see the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you, ZJ. Dr. Rakshay. Oh, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Rakshay Shetty. I uh, head, I'm a children's specialist and I head the pediatrics as well as the pediatric intensive care program at Rainbow Children's Hospital, Bangalore. And uh, my interest um, uh, apart from um, uh, pediatrics and pediatrics ICU is also uh, looking at ways of improving outcomes of children. And with that intention, uh, like what Dr. Gitanjali mentioned, we started this society called as Pedistars. And uh, through this society, we've been uh, running programs across the country, uh, predominantly focusing on uh, resuscitation and uh, emergencies so that uh, people can respond better. So uh, I'm really excited to be part of this program. Thank you very much, Dr. Stephen, for having me in this uh, panel discussion today. Thank you, Rakshay. How do we go? Ms. Ria. Hi everyone, my name is Ria Begaman. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. I am the Director of Administration at the University of Illinois. Uh, I have worked with Aruna and the Heart Rescue team over the last five years. It's been a wonderful opportunity to meet everyone and share and learn. So thanks for uh, having this event and we look forward to a great seminar today. Come in Dr. Nayanjeet. Thank you, Dr. Aruna, for inviting me. Uh, I'm Nayanji Chaudhary. I'm a medical doctor and a public health professional. I work as uh, the senior technical advisor for global health at Medtronic Foundation, Minneapolis. But I'm based out of Bangalore right now. It's been an enlightening journey for the last five years working with Dr. Shetty and Dr. Aruna, so as with GJ, uh, Dr. Terry Vandenhoek, Marcia, Ria, Dr. Pedro uh, and all the Heart Rescue Global Program. Metronic Foundation has been supporting this program. So, and also I serve currently as an honorary advisor to Ramaya International Center for Public Health Innovations, uh, as well as a visiting professor at the Ramaya University. 
great pleasure. Uh, all the best for this seminar today. Thanks. Thank you, Nainjeet. So, Heart Rescue India with the in coordination with UIC Chicago as the knowledge partners and also helping us in bringing in the Heart Rescue program from Chicago and sharing our experiences with us from Brazil and from China, the international faculty who are here today, we indeed have to be thankful. And all this was possible only because of one team that is Metronic Foundation. And we were able to achieve this in the last five years. Indeed, it has been an interesting journey, a very good learning, and hopefully we'll be able to make a big impact in the near future. We have to thank all the faculty, the students, the teachers and the principal who are giving their time today and actively going to participate in this program. So I, had, I asked Dr. Naresh Shetty to tell a few words on the schools that have helped in creating awareness in cardiovascular diseases, especially in this COVID situation. Dr. Naresh Shetty, your views on this, sir. Uh, I, I think, uh... It's a very important uh, program, the school awareness program, and I think this is a saying, catch them young. And I think no better time than to catch these children at the right time, make them understand what is cardiac arrest, what is uh, myocardial infarction, or what is stroke, and know what are the signs, and also tell them what are the reasons that this can happen, whether it's smoking or otherwise, tobacco, eating, and all those things. So when you try to get these children onto the right side, I think things will improve. They will be better citizens as well as they will ensure that the community at large will also improve. And I think the best thing is to catch these children as early as possible, make them understand why it's so important. And it's good for the country also. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Dr. Krab, you have, been, you, you have informed that you are working on the COVID situation. And actually in UIC, a lot of work is being done for the COVID uh, diagnostics and also in the, I, I think, immunization program. From your experience, can you tell the children the safe practices that they need to follow during this COVID crisis? Uh, thanks, Aruna. Um, yeah, um, the most important uh, thing that children have to appreciate is that they are what, what are known as silent carriers. Uh, children are not uh, as susceptible to uh, corona, to infection as adults are. So many children will be infected, but they will not have any signs or symptoms. Uh, but however, they can readily you know, transmit the virus to others you know, who might be at a higher risk for developing you know, signs and symptoms of the disease and including uh, requiring hospitalization. And therefore, therefore, children have an extraordinary responsibility to keep themselves safe uh, so that they will not unknowingly uh, transmit the virus to others. So what are the best ways for children to remain safe? Number one, please wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water and keep your hands clean as much as it's humanly possible. Number two, please wear face mask and you wear them properly. And number three, when you cough, sneeze, or even if you want to speak loudly, uh, please use your elbow so that when you cough, your cough goes into your elbow and not into your hand like this, because when you do that, when you touch other surfaces, you're going to transmit the virus. Or if you shake hands, you will transmit the virus. So the best way to sneeze or cough is to cough into your elbow. Uh, so that you know the virus is not on your hands and that you do not you know touch it. Um, so those are some of the fundamental you know principles. Of course, uh, to the extent possible, especially if you are not wearing a mask, uh, please maintain so what we call a social distance of at least six feet. Uh, so you should be about you know for six feet away from uh, another another individual, uh, so that if you are a silent carrier, you are not going to transmit the virus. So those are some of the easy and, and ready things that children can do to protect themselves and also protect others. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So I thought you had a question for ZJ. You're on yeah. mute. Yeah, Dr. Zhang, uh, thank you for joining us from China. 
Um, so one of the interesting things is, you know, COVID-19, it started in China and it has been all reasonably well controlled, but still it has posed, you know, some significant problems, uh, particularly for schools. Uh, could you please share with, uh, with us uh, your China experience in how they were able to restart the schools and how the students are being protected? Well, very good question. Uh, probably, well, uh, certainly in China, uh, since uh, uh, January and uh, in Wuhan and, uh, and the Hubei uh, province, and uh, certainly the first, uh, the first uh, uh, two months of uh, Lockdown in 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 the, in the in the entire city and also the province really has uh, has uh, uh, created an opportunity for other uh, provinces to 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 be prepared and uh, uh, to ensure that uh, that uh, the virus would not uh, spread to to other parts of the country. So uh, after. Uh, the significant amount of time and uh, spent for a uh, lockdown, and the fortunate one actually in uh, starting in September, a school has uh, reopened, and the university has uh, 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 returned to to fairly normal situation. But of course, we are really, really concerned about the second wave uh, uh, of, of outbreak. Uh, one thing I think that uh, it's really important that, uh, uh, as uh, Prabh just just say that uh, uh, where Masks were uh, play, uh, uh, were play an uh, important role. The social distance is also important. I think the first phase, well, in China, well, well, uh, the uh, the we call that the five stage of uh, of uh, uh, containment, uh, uh, starting uh, in uh, in the ep uh, epicenter uh, in Wuhan. Uh, of course, uh, for for that period of time, that the everything uh, is totally shut and the uh, one in and out community community. Uh, was uh, restricted and uh, uh, so now the situation has improved and but uh, the concern is still still there and uh, the good thing that uh, uh, we, we believe that uh, uh, the population uh, uh, are testing for 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 for, uh, for for the virus has been uh, uh, widespread and to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, we don't have uh, 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 these uh, positive uh, uh, patients uh, running around. And the second point, of course, uh, I think locally, uh, 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 disease control uh, uh, agencies has been very, very uh, 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 cautious about uh, 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 any, any, any potential uh, uh, issue. So but right now that the majority, majority of uh, cases are Really imported cases from uh, uh, abroad, and um, but with two week of uh, of a quarantine, and uh, things has been uh, under control. But domestically, and we don't have uh, domestic cases, uh, uh, new, new new cases for the last uh, uh, six weeks. So I think that's uh, at least this is a very positive uh, uh, situation for uh, for China, and uh, so for 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 school. Uh, again, well, it's really important that uh, just use uh, a preventative uh, measure as uh, uh, Dr. Pro just uh, just uh, uh, described. Well, wash hand and social distance, wear masks, really important. And uh, hope we will hope that the situation can uh, uh, rapidly improve uh, in the uh, near future uh, in uh, you know in in in, uh, in our country certainly. Thank you, Dr. ZJ. What works in US, as Dr. Prabh said, works in China, works in India, and across the world. Right. So take care, children, and follow the rules of staying safe. Masha, I see that you have a question. Go ahead, yes. Masha. Thank you. Um, I, this is a question for Ms. Renita, who's uh, one of the school principals. Um, the students in your schools are all taught the anatomy of the heart and how it functions. Um, but our question is, do you think that science classes where you learn that anatomy should include heart attack? Heart attack? Heart attack? Yeah, I have heart attack. Yes, I, I think that uh, 
the practicality of the situation is um, just a minute. A minute. My system device that has been logged on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think. You're muted. Miss Renita, you're muted. Insta, ma'am, if you have opened the uh, Facebook page, I mean, Facebook uh, on your phone or laptop there, please close it and... Uh, yeah, just yeah. a minute. Just, just give me a minute. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? There's an echo, but go ahead. It's muted. Yeah. I think it's... Sorry about that. I think it's really essential that they learn the practical aspects. HRI, you know, teaches us uh, teaches the children about heart functions. So uh, it it would be very nice if they could actually learn how uh, how to prevent a heart attack, which they're teaching, and the anatomy of you know uh, the heart because it is such a preventable disease. Like the electronics. Thank you. Mr. Just like the electronics causes problem, the heart also, heart also can cause the problem. And now and then it rings the alarm and children have to be aware of that. And to learn, I, I, Pedro, you have a question? I see. You want to ask? Dr. Pedro. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, I have a question to Ms. Mirula. Mirula. Um, can you please explain uh, what is the uh, what is a heart attack uh, in your words, please? Ms. Rudula, did you get the question? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. So I would like to actually take uh, the the words which I use in the uh, school workshops also. And I used to say, if it's a heart attack, it's like you can you can understand well from the words itself that uh, there, there's an attack on your heart and or, or, or in someone's heart and uh, it's a medical emergency then and uh, when when we talk about medical emergency what is happening there so it it occurs basically due to blockage of blood supply to the heart muscle by a clot so if there is no supply, uh, supply uh, of of blood uh, to our heart then uh, and it is and this clot doesn't dissolve or is removed then definitely that can lead to permanent damage or even death so that's that's how i would uh, say a heart attack can be explained great mudrula you are in delhi and you are teaching children on good health and what an excellent way of putting it. I'm sure all the kids learned on what a heart attack is. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Pragra, I see that you have a question. Do you want to go uh, ahead yes. and ask? Uh, I had a question for Dr. Terry uh, that uh, if I have pain in my chest, does that mean it is a heart attack? Is that a symptom? Terry, did you get that? So, <clears throat> so it could be, uh, not necessarily, but it could be a warning sign. And, you know, when we talk to patients, we ask about certain things. And there are um, a clinical classification that we use for, for chest pain. And so uh, whether it comes from the heart or not from the heart, and we divide that up into typical heart pain, like uh, angina, we call it. And that could be a, a substernal chest discomfort, could be a squeezing pain, some describe it, 
with a clenched fist. Uh, some uh, feel like somebody is sitting on their chest. Uh, it can last for a few minutes at a time. That's, that's one uh, sign uh, uh, and symptom. The, the other is uh, it can be provoked by uh, exertion or emotional stress, uh, and it can be relieved by rest. Uh, or some uh, patients have nitroglycerin pills and, and that relieves the, the, the pain or discomfort. Uh, atypical heart pain uh, uh, or angina uh, meets two of those characteristics. Um, Non-cardiac chest pain meets one or none of those characteristics. And that's how we think about it. There are many atypical uh, symptoms of a heart attack as well that we think about. Great, Terry. I remember you telling that it was like an elephant sitting on the heart. <laughs> and you said about the pressure. <laughs> Terry, uh, you, I think you wanted to ask something to Pregna, Ms. Pregna. Yes, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, can you explain atypical symptoms of a heart attack? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, and uh, ma'am, it's pregya, not the Sorry, pregnant. I'm truly sorry, pregya. I think we made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, pregya, I correct myself. Uh, and so correct. Uh, at HRI, we were basically taught that uh, we can uh, remember the symptoms of a heart attack by the acronym LISTEN, wherein uh, L stands for lightheadedness, I stands for increased sweating, S stands for shortness of breath. T stands for tightness or pain in the chest. E stands for extension of the pain to other areas like neck, jaw, etc. And N stands for nausea and vomiting. So that's what I remember from that workshop, which was like very enriching and informative. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> so when they are short of breath and unable to speak, so don't make them speak make them rest. We see that Ms. Preeti uh, from Ramaya Vidya Niketan has a question. Um, sure. Dr. Pedro, sir, can we give water to a person who is having a heart attack? Dr. Pedro, Preeti has a question for you. Thank you, Preeti, excellent question. And a common thing that everybody asks. Dr. Pedro. I think, can you hear me, Dr. Pedro? Do you want to answer that, Terry? Can sure, we I can answer that. So, sure. uh, so scientifically, there's no reason why one should deny water to a patient uh, uh, who wants to drink water, uh, but one should not force them to drink either. Great. Does that answer your question, Preeti? Thank you, ma'am. Great. Ms. Kanchanam, now you, I think you have a question for Dr. Geetanjali. Go ahead. Good evening to all the panel doctors. My name is Kanchana Kumari, and I would like to ask one question. That is, what is cardiac arrest? Dr. Geetanjali. That's very nice. That Thank is one so of the difficult questions. Excellent question. <laughs> If, if we have to save precious life, it's very important to know what's cardiac arrest and how to recognize it. So basically, cardio means something related to our heart. Arrest means, you all know, police arrest means stopping somebody from doing things. So cardiac arrest means the heart stops. And you know the heart is the most important organ in the body. So without the heart, nothing can work, including our brain, our lungs, our whole body, muscles, nothing can work. So when the heart stops, that is when the cardiac arrest happens, somebody who's standing or sitting can suddenly collapse. Or if the person is already lying down, can become still and not able to move. Or you can't see the person breathing or sometimes they can even gas, that's a danger sign. So basically, if you see all this, then the person is having cardiac arrest. Now it's important to know how to learn how to manage cardiac arrest. Over to you, Aruna. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Thank yeah. you. Thank you, doctor. 
Great. You're welcome. Great. That's nice. Marcia, I think uh, you wanted to have a word. Go ahead, Marcia. I do. Thank you. Um, you know, one of the most important components of what we do is bystander response. And in the HRI training that we did for the school children, um, we did some of that. And I thought that Harry Prasad ought to talk a little bit about how we did bystander training in the in the, the training for the school children. Harry, would you talk about that, please? Yeah, thank you, Marsha. So from the very uh, outset, uh, Dr. Aruna and the rest of us here at, at Rescue India team, we felt strongly that uh, bystander CPR training uh, must be a very important part of uh, the school modules. From of the ten modules, uh, the four of the modules deal with the bystander CPR training. So that's the level of importance we have given it for this. And we strongly felt that we didn't want to do, uh, just walk into the schools, just do a feel good event for one hour where we just hand them a mannequin and they do compressions and we just walk out. And at the end of the day, they're not sure what they learned and we are not sure if they learned it either. So what we designed a very comprehensive, uh, robust program which has a pre-assessment, a post-assessment, and a very clear acronym uh, of a 3C and a 4C approach, something that they can remember uh, as they go on to become adults. And also, essentially, we wanted the children not just to be learners, but also become trainers in a way for the rest of the community, because this is one way where uh, the child goes and talks about uh, CPR to an adult, or if they're in a situation, they'll not only be able to perform uh, chest compressions themselves, they'll also be able to guide the adult in the situation to do that. So I think uh, what was one of the most fulfilling uh, uh, things that we did among the, uh, the rest of the modules because it was very active and very uniquely so, it was a one-on-one -on -one training. Each of the students learned uh, chest compressions on the steps of CPR uh, with a one-is-to-one -one, uh, instructor ratio, which was something I feel so very uh, proud about uh, uh, our program. Thank you. Excellent, Dr. Hari. Dr. Prabhakar, do you agree with that? Uh, I have a question for Brunalini. Um, so Dr. Hari Prasad just talked about 3C. Brunalini, could you please help us understand what 3C stands for? Well, thank you, sir, for the question. So the 3C approach is basically a three-step approach. Firstly, we need to check the pulse of the victim who has collapsed. And if the victim does not respond or if the victim is not uh, mm -hmm. breathing, then the second step would to be call for help. Then the third step is to perform chest compression, yeah. which need to be started hard and fast by placing the heel of the palm at the center of the victim's chest and performing steady compressions of about 100 to 120 compressions in a minute. That is what the 3C approach is. Excellent, Rolani. Except that when you check, I think we should just check for response and avoid checking for pulse because it's a little difficult. Yeah. So we, uh, though it was there before for checking for the pulse recommendations, but currently we are not mm -hmm. recommending for checking the pulse. So you just check for the response. If the patient is not responding, not breathing, go ahead. Call for help and start the compression. Dr. Pedro, uh, have you come back? Yeah, sorry, I had a problem with the internet and I, now I'm back. And I, I have a question regarding the 4C to uh, Master Goku student. Uh, what is the 4C approach? Um, can you please explain, please? Yes, sir. Thank you for the question. Yes, it is as similar as 3C. And uh, if a victim uh, is collapsed, it is a 4C. Of the first C represents to check the response. If we ask, are you all right? There is no reply. And you should check the breathing. The three things we should remember in this process. First two, the uh, first to feel, listen, and uh, feel, listen, and to uh, look at them. Look at, I should observe everything, the moment of the body. And uh, the second thing is to listen what they're saying and listen the uh, moment of the uh, breathing, what they're taking. And we should look, uh, feel the breath. We are to our uh, face, uh, what they breathe uh, in that uh, situation. 
and the uh, second C represents to call to uh, toll free number ambulance 108 and uh, to ask to uh, somebody to get AED kit and the third C uh, represent to compress the chest as uh, the last caller said last caller said and we should compress it hard and fast fast mean uh, we should uh, compress two uh, two times per second that is 100 to 120 uh, times per minute and hard means uh, it, uh, it should compress to two five centimeter down and you should cut back and the fourth c represents to connect the aed kit as it is instructed by it or if, if there is no aed kit uh, continue to uh, uh, continue doing C uh, C cpr as uh, the still the ambulance arrive there thank you thank you for the question sir great goku uh, Dr. Hari Prasad, do you just want to reinforce? I think uh, the, I think he got it absolutely right. But except the first thing is we will stick to uh, uh, checking for response. And uh, in this uh, person, as a, there's no breathing. So no response and no breathing, you go to the next seat. That is call for help. Thank you. Good job, Google. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hari. So I see in the chat box, Dr. Nareshiti has a question for uh, Ria. Ria, we know that you are a yoga teacher. This is your hobby. And we hope that you will be able to explain to the kids how physical activity plays an important role in the prevention of heart disease. Physical activity. Yeah. Um, children who are active and start habits young uh, become fit and healthy adults. Um, please know that physical activity can be recreational like swimming or dancing or outdoor activities. Um, you can have organized activities like football or cricket um, or competitive sports and yoga, of course. Um, how much physical activity do you need each day? Well, it is recommended for 60 minutes. You don't have to do it all at the same time. You can split it up throughout the day. Um, physical activity will help you relax. It will reduce your stress and it will help your overall well-being. So thank you so much for that question. Thank you, Ria. So, Miss, Mrs. Kanchana. Vijaymani. Vijaymani. Okay. Ms. Mr. Vijaymani, you want to add uh, something to that about uh, the aerobic exercises? Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, thank you for inviting me to join this seminar first thing. Uh, very good evening to all the panel doctors. We are fortunate to get associated with uh, HRI, which made our students awareness about heart-related issues. When they come and taught our students, students were made to measure the pulse rate and then made to do 20 squats. Students measured their pulse rate again and upon finding that it has increased, it served as an opportunity to reinforce the importance of aerobic exercise and a healthy heart. We also have regularly practice yoga which through which meditation is practiced to gain mental health and regular exercise to keep body fit. And of course, aerobic exercise yes. are very important for the kids and keep body weight, better heart and lung fitness and bones and muscles healthy. Fever symptoms of depression. Exercise makes the children to lower the body fat and become strong and healthy adults. And of course, they'll have very good blood circulation, air circulations, and uh, life force and circulation and energy circulations, which help them to become fit and healthy in their life. Thank excellent. you. Excellent. Mr. Vijayamani and Ms. Mrs. Kanchana. Kanchana. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yeah. you, doctor. So, Ms. Meera has a question. Yes, ma'am. Good evening to everyone. Yeah. My question is to Dr. Nainjit, sir, sir. And this is regarding 
an advice on a balanced diet to have a healthy heart. What should be the balanced diet for a healthy heart? Yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> thank you for asking that question. That's one of my most favorite questions any day. <laughs> any day. Yeah, so, well, uh, let me see if I can do justice to your question in a language that is more palatable to the children as well as, you know, you know, people in general. So a balanced diet is one that provides us uh, all the necessary nutrients that we need through, through our menu of food for our own growth and development, uh, which in very simple terms, it means a balance of proteins and carbs and fats and vitamins and minerals. Uh, but then to really choose a balanced diet for practically preventing heart disease is, is really complex in this market driven world. Everything is decided by the market. So, uh, so I can quickly give tips about you know, what balanced diet people can choose. So for example, avoid uh, you know, or be at least moderate on the processed whites. So all the processed whites are a, actually a no-no, but in today's world, you can at least moderate. Anything made for, from sugar or white rice or white flour or trans fat or vanaspati or salt, everything in all these in excess is definitely anti-heart. What can you add to your menu? You can add to your menu all naturally colorful foods. Your plate should be colorful, particularly for children and adults so that you can build a healthy heart. All kinds of veggies and all kinds of fruits in plenty, nuts, whole grains, uh, pulses, you know, of course, you know, anything ex in excess will be difficult to even sort of, you know, digest, but a balanced mix of all of these. Uh, for those who, who love non-vegetarian food, uh, fish and poultry are fine, uh, but then processed meat is better avoided or eaten in moderation. So if you can make a choice uh, based on these guidelines, I think balanced diet is not difficult uh, to achieve. But I, I, I also know how, how difficult it is for schools to really sort of educate their children or even, you know, provide uh, avenues in the schools uh, you know, for, for, for access to healthy or, or balanced food. I, I don't know. Uh, I think there are teachers here, uh, you know, maybe from Gyana Teja school, Ms. Prerna or Chetana, if you can tell us how is your school sort of ensuring children to have yes. a diet, yeah, please. Yes, sir. Good evening, good evening, one and all. Uh, myself being a science teacher, I usually talk more about uh, diet food during my class, like what is healthy food and what are benefits of it and what is importance of it. I keep telling every, every time in my free time. Uh, I, uh, in our school, uh, we advise children to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables rather than junk food. Because uh, we know that children are very much, not only children, uh, common people are very much attracted to junk foods because they taste better. Uh, so we recommend parents or we, we are giving a, a, what we call, uh, a food chat. We have made a food chat. Uh, mm -hmm. So we give or we recommend parents to send the tiffin boxes according to the food chat. And do that, that food chat usually uh, will be containing at least one fruit or seasonal fruit and uh, raw vegetables compulsory in their tiffin box. And we are rechecking every time about it. And whenever we get to know uh, whether they are following the food chat, uh, we, we keep on telling the importance of that. This is how we are recommending about the uh, healthy food in our school, sir. That's very nice to hear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, that makes it easier for the parents. I think you give a timetable and what they need to send, but I don't know if the children are going to like that. But anyway, <laughs> Dr. Gitanjali, I see that you have a question. Dr. Gitanjali? Yes, thank you, Luna. This question is to Ms. Shaili. Uh, uh, the same thing related to food very challenging question how did you motivate how did you motivate the children to choose the healthy food how did you make them learn thank you for the question uh, dr gitanjali uh, it is an honor to be interacting with you and all the stalwarts present here um, while working with adolescents in different schools uh, what we realized is that it became eminent uh, to talk to them about their food choices uh, we thought that that was the need of the hour 
so as part of a fun activity or fun sessions what we essentially did was we divided the students into different groups and each group was given the task of naming three foods that were good for the heart and three foods that were not good for the heart so doing this activity actually ensured that the students were able to differentiate between healthy and unhealthy foods and as dr nanji rightly mentioned earlier one can eat healthy food every day uh, which is not only good for the heart but it is also delicious in taste and uh, by doing that one can ensure that the heart is healthy as well as the tongue is also satisfied at the same time so i hope that uh, help resolve your query dr gitanjali Thank you so much. It's amazing. It really. Thank Dr. you, Dr. Gitanjali is actually handling children day in and day out, and so it is really amazing the way the teachers and the students are getting back and telling the answers and how they are keeping good health and promoting good health in children, which is very important. Dr. Rakshai. Shetty, who is the leading pediatrician in Bangalore, is relatively quiet today. Raksha, I see that you have something to ask. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the things what COVID has uh, brought us is essentially a lockdown phase. And what what I have noticed as a pediatrician is that a lot of children are actually coming with the weight gain, which is quite significantly uh, you know harmful you know, almost bordering towards obesity and including myself i have put on a lot of weight over the last uh, few months because of this lockdown so i just wanted to know did you get an opportunity to um, kind of motivate your parents and probably your friends about um, uh, physical activity pragna do you want to take this question pragya sorry pragya uh yes ma'am sure uh ma'am uh, i think there are a lot of things that we can do which uh, do not require us to go out and uh, still i think we can do a lot to exercise ourselves like we can practice yoga we can do uh, maybe join certain online uh, sessions that would uh, help us i think there's a lot that can be done great great that's nice Uh, I think Terry, you wanted to ask Dr. Rakshay a question about children. Go ahead. Yes. The, thank you, Aruna. Dr. Rakshay, uh, being a children's doctor, do you think children should be taught to use uh, uh, an automatic external defibrillator, an AED? Th thank you so much, Terry. It's a good question, and oftentimes uh, we kind of focus a lot on healthcare professionals about uh, CPR and use of AED. but i think there are enough studies to show that uh, children too can be taught these skills and um, anybody who's beyond 8th grade could be taught how to provide an effective cpr and how to use aed and i think that's an important um, thing because uh, in, in a crisis situation um, often times children do can direct adults about how to use them so absolutely and i think that is something that can be taught and uh, probably useful if it is taught thank you Priya, I think you have a you have something you wanted to mention. Go ahead, go ahead, Priya. We do. There are things that we can do to modify our risk for having a heart attack, and I wanted uh, Dr. ZJ to explain some of those things that we can modify to reduce our risk. Yes. Well, thank you, Priya. This is a very good question. Uh, <clears throat> well, certainly, more for every individual, and we do have. Uh, while we are when when we get getting <clears throat> getting old and uh, we tend to have uh, have uh, uh, the higher likelihood of uh, have a heart attack but uh, many uh, uh, thing that uh, we can we can change in uh, well, to avoid a uh, heart attack or heart disease for example we well, for example the uh, the main risk factors for uh, cardiovascular disease or, or heart attack including a high blood pressure let's say and high uh, cholesterol or a lipid problem which is uh, it's a fatty or, or cholesterol problem in the in the uh, in, in the vessel and if you are uh, in the unhealthy lifestyle like uh, taking the cigarette smoking or if you have uh, diabetes 
the likelihood to have a heart attack or heart, heart, heart disease will be much, much higher in the late uh, uh, life, well, late, late time of, uh, for your life. Well, keep in mind that uh, heart attack is not only, uh, well, it's not really a, 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 a old people's disease. It could have happened at any time. We have seen clinically many patients as young as 30 years old with a heart attack. So healthy lifestyle is really important. And uh, while when you do exercise and keep your diet, uh, a balanced diet, the likelihood to have uh, high, high blood pressure or high cholesterol, uh, high blood cholesterol would be low. So that could help us avoid uh, the, the, the possibility of a heart attack. If we, if we don't uh, drink, if we don't uh, 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 smoke, and uh, the likelihood of uh, having a heart attack would be much lower than uh, those uh, individuals who smokes, who drink, and who do other uh, unhealthy, uh, unhealthy lifestyle. So make sure to have a, a healthy lifestyle as early as possible. Just as uh, your teacher that say that uh, well, eat eat right, eat more vegetable and eat uh, more uh, fruit, and uh, do exercise, and also to avoid uh, th th those uh, 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 unhealthy uh, habits. So that will really take a long time, and uh, this uh, uh, will be uh, an important for uh, for yourself and also if you can uh, talk to your parents and your grandparents about this uh, this will really helpful thank you thank you so much yeah i think uh, the children must have understood the importance of eating right mm -hmm. i see from ramaya vidyani ketan miss ritika I think Hi. you have been waiting a long time to ask a question. Go ahead, go ahead, Ritika. Hello, my question is to Dr. Pedro. How can I recognize a patient is having a stroke? Thank Dr. you for the question. Thank you for the question. This is a very important question since stroke is a main cause of death in disability worldwide. And there is a great mnemonic to remember how to identify a patient with a stroke. Uh, in a case, for example, your parents, your uh, your family or, or friends, you should remember fast because if you identify this patient uh, and in you fast go to a hospital, you can uh, you can reduce the risk of death and disability. And F, you can see by a face drop if there is a difference uh, in the face. Uh, if, for example, for a smile, is different one side when you compare to other. The other one is A. You can see if there is a difference in the in the arm. For example, you can put the arms together and one arm will drop and they lost the, the strength in, in one arm. Uh, and also uh, about the speech, if you ask and they cannot speak, uh, speak properly, you should uh, go fast and, and call the ambulance uh, and I think in India it's 108 is the right uh, the, to call the, the, the ambulance and in, it should go straight to the hospital. Uh, it's time to call. So the fast would be the face drop, the arm weakness, speech problem. It's time to call because you need to go fast to solve this problem. So thank you very much for the question. Ritika, thank that you. answers your question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ritika. Uh, Dr. Hari, you want to play a video quickly? Yeah, sure. Uh, Suhas, I think uh, you have the video. Can you please share the screen and play? Two days back, one man of 40 years came to our emergency department. After the ECG was done, he was found to be frankly having a cardiac arrest issue and he arrested and he was gone in no time. 
Why did this happen? Simply because he did not think that he will have a cardiac issue. And this happens almost every day, every moment in some part of a country. We need to do something about it. I think when we started the Heart Rescue India, I think our issues were how do we actually mitigate this particular problem? We have come a long way off. My team under Dr. Aruna and her team have ensured that we had the community awareness. We ensured that most of our hospitals who actually worked with us together really did a great job in getting the community to understand the need of preventive cardiology. As you all know, we have taught you about the warning signs of a heart attack. But the saddest part about someone having a heart attack is they can also have what we call as sudden cardiac arrest. sudden cardiac arrest, Yes, we have taught you about it. So sudden cardiac arrest only over the heart and into the heart cancer mana the heart attack other heart into the chances. So we will teach you what you need to do when you see someone with a sudden cardiac arrest. Are you ready to learn? Yes. Okay. Hey sandwich called no? Just give me a glass of water. Sudars Koli, Ardagante, walk hook band with him. Rohan, come fast, man. Hey, I'm coming, guys. Oh. Yeah, nah. oh. Vignesh is here. Vignesh is here. Vignesh. Vignesh. Look. Just lay down. Uncle. Uncle, are you okay, Uncle? Uncle. He's not breathing. Breathe. Give him a seat, Pierre. We don't dominate him. Yes. You yes, first calm down. Calm down. So, let's go to the Please allow me to take over. Do not touch patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch patient. Shock advice. Charging. Press flashing button. Shock delivery. It is safe to touch patient. Start CPR. Are you responding? I'll do tell you DCG. I'll send over a doctor. He's responding, Karan. Mom, you know, aspirin allergy, is there? Huh? Ha, again, Nila. Yeah, that's the medication for Kunti, Karan. Nila. So, aspirin, cold water. Cold water.
we are asking each one of the persons who have chest pain to listen to their heart. If you have lightheadedness, if you have inability to speak, or if you are finding it an increased sweating, if you have shortness of breath, if you have tightness in your chest or chest pain extending to your neck, jaws, arm or back, and if you have any gastric symptoms like gastritis, nausea, vomiting, call the toll-free number or the 108 so that a person who is dispatched reaches your house and is able to do an ECG. Give a chance to the loved ones. Give a chance to your family. Give a chance to the society. We are here to save lives. Heart Rescue India is here to help you to lead a normal life. So call early and reach the hospital early if you have chest pain. So we are coming to the end of the program. We didn't realize how the time flew. Dr. Naresh Shetty kept saying, keep smiling to all of us. But then in the emergency department, we are seeing young people dying, coming in late or dying at our doorsteps. And we are not able to do anything for them to even in spite of interventions because they arrive late. So watching the loud ones departing so early in life and the effects that it has on the family members is really disheartening for the emergency team. So that's the reason that Heart Rescue India has been given so much of importance. We hope the children of today have learned the teachers are able to convey this message to all. We would like to thank each one of you, the students, the teachers, the viewers, and the faculty, all the participants, step one, and also the pedistars for giving this opportunity as a clo closing remark and take home message, Dr. Nareshiti and Dr. Prabhakar. Do you want to give an one liner, please? Okay, one liner, Aruna. The terrific uh, seminar series. Uh, thanks for conducting. Let's do more of this because reinforcing these are ideas are very important for children to, you know, sustain good good uh, practices. Dr. Nareshiti. Well, despite all the problems in emergency, keep smiling, Aruna. The best is yet to come. <laughs> yes, keep smiling, everybody, but keep a healthy heart. DJ, any take-home message, Pedro? Dr. Pedro and DJ. Yes, uh, just make sure that uh, we keep healthy lifestyle. And I would like uh, to thank you, Aruna, and all the other and keep healthy. <laughs> well, whenever you see uh, a family member or friends or or, or, or some 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 people uh, on the street, or well, make sure that you 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 use what you learn and uh, and help people uh, 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 if if you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the participants, UIC, Ramaya, Metronic Foundation, and Heart Rescue India. Wishes all its viewers a healthy life, lifestyle. Protect your heart. We are here to save lives. Shruti, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful session, doctors, teachers, and students. The questions were so relatable, and I think that this was one of the most needed sessions, as uh, as you mentioned, that cardiovascular diseases are increasing day by day. The tips and the way you explained keeping it so simple was just awesome, and the video at the end uh, made it more appealing. So I thank uh, Heart Rescue India and Pedistas for doing this session for us, and everyone for taking the time of the busy schedule and coming here and doing this wonderful session. I think we should do more uh, such sessions 
Uh, stay tuned, dear viewers, for yet another interesting session by Dr. Geetanjali Her and the team of Pedistas on breaking the barriers in simulation training. Watch your reality of episode two coming on the 2nd of October. Thank you all for joining us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And for more information on Project Step 1, visit www.projectstep1.org. You can find information on how to volunteer for Project Step 1. And doctors, you know what to do. Your 30 minutes can save lives. So please do give Ms. Call on the number mentioned on the chat box. Thank you so much, doctors. Thank you for doing this session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.